thoughts on how to improve as an intermediate self-taught player. I would give the exact same advice whether you've been playing for three days or for 30 years. I mean, basically, just learn a trillion songs. Anybody who would be on a professional recording is a professional bass player, and they're probably there because they know what they're doing. So basically, you could use that as an example of what's something cool you could do. I spent years and years in music school, and I learned a lot from it. But the year after that, I just spent the entire year doing nothing but learning Red Hot Chili Peppers bass lines, Incubus bass lines, Beatles bass lines, and I got about 10 times more out of that year than all the years at music school combined. How to get coordination right left hand while slapping. The best thing you could do for that is to just take things really, really slow as molasses and do a lot of repetitions. It's just like going to the gym. The more reps you do, the more results you'll see. And one thing that I want to say is that a lot of people misinterpret what playing slow means. Some people might think that if a pattern goes like, then doing it slow would be like, what I mean by slow is like this. Slow as molasses and a lot of repetitions. It takes a little bit of time. Favorite bassist, definitely Flea. I think that he has the best combination of being melodic, playing technical, being creative. And the number one most important thing, I like his musicality. My first favorite bass player and the reason why I got this guy is because of John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. Some honorable mentions might include Chris Squire, Jocko Pastorius, Victor Wooten, Chris Novoselic, Colin Greenwood. If you could be in any band, who would you join? This is gonna be a common theme with this, but uh, probably Red Hot Chili Peppers just because of the music. It's really, really fun bass music. But the one thing I would say is that I don't really have that kind of energy. Those guys are bouncing around on stage. Even though most of my videos are fast, distorted slap stuff, I'm actually a pretty chill, low-key guy. So I think I would best be suited for a really musical slow band, like maybe Radiohead or, of course, the Beatles. But does that mean that I have to kick one of them out? I wouldn't want to do that. Why did you start to play bass? I actually didn't start playing until I was 17 years old. My mom tried to force some piano lessons on me when I was like nine, but it didn't stick. I'd had some thoughts about thinking it seemed pretty cool, but maybe just feeling like, oh, there's no way I could ever be a bass player. As silly as it sounds, I think that the final straw was I thought maybe it would be a good tool to maybe meet a girlfriend. And every girlfriend I've ever had, I met through music, so it kind of worked. How did you get motivated to get good at bass? I've always had a really obsessive personality when it comes to this kind of stuff. When I'm into something, I'm really into it. I've gone through phases like that with coloring, writing, reading, video games, skateboarding, playing sports. I definitely think though it's pretty important to be a little bit obsessive about it if you ever really want to get to the next level. I have memories of being at work and I'd bring my bass to work and I'd leave it in the trunk and then on my lunch break I'd go practice. So you gotta eat, drink, and sleep it. Just gotta make it your life. How long did it take you to write your book? Cool Cat's Guide to Slap Bass. Making my book a reality was a lot of work to bring it from the imagination stage to actually having it on paper. There were a lot of days that I went to work and I was thinking about it all day and then I came home and worked on it for hours after I was really tired. There were a lot of times that I had a really bad headache and I didn't want to keep working on it and I was just drained. And it took months and months of preparing. Then I didn't have good computer software. Then I had to do this weird copy paste thing where I was doing, taking screenshots off this one program and copy pasting them into paint and cropping them. I didn't know what I was doing, but months and months of that and fighting through it, I have a book. It was not a very fun process to actually make it. It felt like work, but the result makes me feel great. How old are you? 31. Favorite song to play on bass? Um, I'm gonna go with Aeroplane by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, My Lovely Man, Power of Equality, get honorable mentions. Really like Lemon Song by Led Zeppelin. Best way to learn gospel bass lines? Same way as any other style of music, just learn a bunch of the material. Find gospel bass lines that you like, learn them, and try to analyze them. Favorite technique for playing the bass? Definitely slap, and I have a funny thing to say about that, and that's that I played bass for about seven or eight years, and I couldn't slap a line to save my life. I remember being in a band that had a slap line and I butchered it. What really helped me is learning a bunch of Red Hot Chili Peppers lines and after a while of doing that, things just started to feel a lot more comfortable for me. And after developing some muscle memory, it just became second nature. Best 80s song with a cool bass part. I'm gonna sound super generic when I say this, but Queen, another one bites the dust. It's a classic. What did you want to be when you were small? Um, I wanted to be an architect, I wanted to be a firefighter, I wanted to be a biologist, I wanted to be a nurse, I wanted to be a historian. I went through a lot of trial and error when I was in college and music was like my fifth major, but it was always number one in my heart. Oh. 
Opinions on Cliff Burton. I think that Cliff Burton is one of the best bass players of all time and obviously died way, way, way too young, but I think that he really set the foundation for distorted bass and shredding on bass and bass solos, and I think before that it was a lot more about grooves, so he really was a pioneer in that way. Will your face melter bass snippets be made into full songs, a Justin solo album, beanie mandatory? Well, we know that the beanie is going to be mandatory because nobody likes his hairline. I'm like a vampire. But in all seriousness, I have an original band called Charlie Peach, and that's where most of my actual songwriting comes out. I have a pretty terrible voice, so Kayleen does all the singing. In terms of actual solo bass stuff, I guess I hadn't really thought about it that much. I've never really thought that there's much demand for it. A lot of my videos are tailored for really short, highly technical, eye-catching stuff to get viewed. So the thought of releasing an album just hasn't really crossed my mind, but maybe. Most of my riffs do turn into Charlie Peach songs. Who do you think are the most likely celebrities to be aliens? Mark Zuckerberg. Though I'm probably gonna get blocked on this because he probably owns whatever platform you're watching on this. Favorite non-Harry Potter fantasy book? Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge Harry Potter fan in general. My number two pick would be Lord of the Rings though. I saw the first book and I read all the other ones before the next, what, I saw the first? Saw the first book, <laughs> saw the first movie, and then I wanted to read all the other ones, so I kind of knew it was coming. Fun fact, when I was 11 years old, there was an assignment in fifth grade to write a story to your first grade self that you'd enjoy, and you know, I kind of did a little Lord of the Rings ripoff, but I got really, really into it, and I went through a brief period where I was writing a lot, and it turned into a pretty big hobby. Hobbit? Hobby? And it turned into a pretty big hobby of mine. I did it for about two years, just worked on one book, and Yes, it was very much a Lord of the Rings ripoff, so to speak, but I did get it all the way up to 250 pages. I told you I was obsessive. I have a lot of memories of during recess or on the bus home just sitting in the corner and writing my book and everyone thought it was weird, and they were right. Most embarrassing moment on stage. Best moment. For me, without a shadow of a doubt, one show stands out to me. In our little community, we have a cool little venue called The Phoenix, and I was really excited to play there because it was one of my favorite venues, and I'd gone to it for years, and I'd never played at it. So I set up a really good show with some really popular bands in the area and advertised it, and everyone in the band was really excited to play there, and it was just overall a really positive event. Now here's the thing about that. At shows like that where there's like four bands, you either want to go second or third because the first slot, most people aren't there yet, or the headlining fourth slot, most people want to leave. So second or third, usually third are the best choice. So I set up the show, so I wanted to go third. I forget what the exact details are, but something happened where the fourth band that was supposed to play, they needed to move up to the third slot. I think maybe someone couldn't make it until earlier, I don't know. In any case, we ended up playing the fourth slot, which was the headlining slot, which sounds cool in theory, but they went on and they played for like an hour. And after they were done breaking down and we were starting setting up, we weren't gonna start our set till about 11.45. <laughs> so around the end of the second set, there's probably 150 people there. It was a pretty happening place for where we were at. But by the start of the fourth set, there's only like 30 people left. And another thing was I made these little burnt pre-made CDs of our demo to give out for free just because we want to promote the band. So before we started, we announced that and we put it on front of the stage and of the 30 people that were left, about 25 of them just took a demo and left. So in the end, we were playing for like five people. So I have this memory of the floor being completely empty with the exception of this one guy who was just headbanging right in the middle. And I also remember I really wanted to improve my stage presence around that time. So I was trying some extra movements, some headbanging stuff, stuff that looked super awkward. And I remember one time, I have no clue what I was trying to do, but I was trying to do some kind of twisting motion like this. But I ended up going too far back and I pretty much lost my balance and had to like stumble across the stage. And I remember watching that video back, I remember watching the video back of that show and I saw this one shot, just this one guy in the middle of the floor head banging while I'm like falling over sideways. So that was a little humiliating. Best moment on bass, certainly without a shadow of a doubt, Charlie Peach had one show where we just went all out, called in all our favors, got all our friends and family, sold all the pre-sale tickets to it and we sold the show out and we're the only band on the venue and it's a really, really, really hard thing to do and we probably couldn't have done it again if we tried. But that first moment where we walked out on stage and it was a sold out place and it was packed and the ovation, I was so happy in that moment. So happy that I actually had a bass solo in the first song and I completely biffed it because I had so much adrenaline going through me. But you know, still a good memory. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for all of you watching my videos. You rock.